Hello everyone, welcome to Mark One Design EMC uh, video channel. Uh, in today's session, we're going to talk about how to separate common mode and differential mode noise by using either a listen mate or current probe method. The test setup is pretty much the same as what we did for the conducted emission test setup. Here we have the two listens and we're using a device called listen mate to differentiate common mode and differential mode noise. The listen mate needs to be connected to two listens and the output can be either connected to a spectral analyzer in this case or an oscilloscope. To measure the common mode current is easy put two wires through the current probe. Here I'm using an insulation material to make sure that both wires sit in the middle of the current probe. Simply click the current probe and we're ready to go. If the current probe is connected to spectrum analyzer, then we can just connect it directly. However, if it is connected to an oscilloscope, we are making sure that the input of the oscilloscope is selected as 50 ohm. On listen mate, we select the common mode output and we terminate the differential mode port using 50 ohm. We monitor the common mode current using an oscilloscope first. Channel 1, yellow trace, is the common mode voltage, whilst channel 2, the current measurement, shows you the uh, common mode current. And as we zoom in, you will see that both the voltage and current waveform have shared very similar waveform um, profile. Let's have a detailed look of the measurement results. Channel 1, as we explained, measure the uh, voltage output of the listen mate, and channel 2 is the output signal of the RF current probe. We measure the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, voltage on channel 1, that's 43 millivolts over a 50 ohm impedance, which resulted in about 0.86 milliamp. And the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the RF current probe gives 5.9 millivolts. And the impedance of the RF current probe is roughly 6.7 ohm. So if we work out the math, that gives about 0.88 milliamps. So the results between the voltage and the current measurement are pretty close. You might ask why 6.7 ohms of the RF current probe impedance? That is because when um, you had a commercial um, calibrated RF current probe, they will always provide you with a impedance curve such as this. So in my case, the RF current probe has an impedance of about 16.5 dB ohm from roughly 1 MHz up to 500 MHz. Now, this 16.5 dB ohm is only measured when you have a 50 ohm impedance, okay? So that's why we need to set up the oscilloscope input as 50 ohm. So we know that um, across a wide frequency range, we still have about 6.7 ohm um, impedance uh, measured by this RF current probe. If you are using current probe to measure differential mode noise, then the wires need to be configured in such a way that they feed through the current probe in opposite direction. This will result in cancellation of common modes, but doubling the differential mode noise. So whatever we measured here, we need to divide the measurement value by 2 or subtract by 6 dB. On listen mate, we need to connect the output to differential mode and then terminate the common mode port with 50 ohm termination. Again, we're using a oscilloscope to check the differential mode voltage and current waveform. Uh, we froze the waveform and then we zoomed in. Here again, uh, channel 1 is the voltage measurement and channel 2 is the current measurement. Now, depends on how you put your uh, current probe, you might need to uh, invert the waveform so as to have a matched waveform uh, between the two traces. 
let's have a detailed look into the waveform we just captured. The on channel 1, as we mentioned, that's the voltage measurement, and channel 2 is the current measurement. We measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage uh, waveform of channel 1, and here's the result. We basically measure this point to this point, and that's 88 millivolts peak-to-peak, -peak. and we knew that we connected the uh, voltage measurement to a 50 ohm input of the oscilloscope, so that will result in 1.76 milliamp. Uh, measurement and we measure the current probe output and that's 20 millivolts peak to peak over 6.7 ohm but as we mentioned before because of the wire configuration we need to divide the value by 2 so that's 10 millivolts peak to peak over 6.7 ohm which resulted in 1.5 milliamps so as you can see there are some measurement error due to the setup and some insertion loss in the modules but the result is pretty close this is the scanning result using a spectrum analyzer we're using TechBox EMC View for the scanning. As we can see here, the green trace is the differential mode result and the pink trace is the common mode result. It's very interesting that we can see that from low frequency range, which pretty much starting from 150 kHz up to 10 MHz, the differential mode noise really dominates. And it is true for most of the applications. The common mode noise only started taking big effects from sort of 5 megahertz range. Another interesting thing to see from this result is that you can see that actually the common mode noise has a resonance point at roughly um, 60 to 70 uh, megahertz range. This is because between the EUT and LISN, we have about 1 meter to 1.2 meter long cable length. And if you work out the cable length uh, relating to a quarter wave um, wavelength, then you will find actually 1.25 meter uh, is actually radiating very strongly at um, 60 or 70 megahertz.